I've seen producers go from never having finished a track to getting signed to their favourite label within a matter of months, but I've also seen other people struggle for years and give up before they've even finished one track. So in this video, I ask why that is and uncover what I've learned from coaching over 10,000 students over the past eight and a half years. So you'll be able to see which patterns lead to success and which lead to frustration and failure in music production. I've seen the same mistakes crop up time and time again and the pitfalls that almost all producers fall into. And when I look back at my own journey as a producer, Producer. I made those same mistakes too, so in this video I'd like to share the three most important things I've learned after coaching all these people in the hopes that you might find them useful too. So here is lesson number one. Many of the students I've coached have a very broad taste in music. They like techno, house, drum and bass, even rock, pop or classical, and I too fall into this category. And this can make your music production journey easier, but also more difficult. So let me explain. With music production, listening to and enjoying a lot of different music can give you broad insight into what goes into making great music in any genre. It also keeps things interested and varied of course and there's the added bonus of being able to take influences from different genres and mix them together to develop your unique sound. However, having a broad taste in music if not managed properly can actually ruin your chances and ultimately lead to failure. And here's why. Imagine a large body of water in the desert for example and this water represents your creative energy and around this desert are several lakes and naturally that water wants to flow into those lakes which is where all the best water lives. The water in the lakes has got fish and boats, even kelp. It's amazing. Now, each of these lakes signify the different genres you could produce. And if you dig a trench that leads to a lake, the water is going to flow down it. Now, the more narrow the trench, the faster that water is going to get to one of those lakes. But if you start digging multiple trenches or leave the water to just spread out into a big puddle, it will eventually evaporate. I've seen exactly this happen with music producers and their creative energy. I've seen producers producers who insist on producing multiple genres simultaneously, but unless you're already very good at music production and very skilled at it, trying to do this almost always ends up in them giving up because they don't get to any of those lakes before their creative energy dries up. Now for some people they know exactly what they want to produce straight off, but if you do have a broad taste of music, in the first year it's natural to have fun and experiment and work out which genres you like to listen to and which you enjoy producing the most, and this is actually great. But at some point if you ultimately want to get to one of those sweet, sweet kelpy lakes on the horizon, <laughs> at some point you should dig that trench and focus on just one genre. And the beauty of this is you don't even need to be married to that one genre for life, but when you focus on one genre for say six months to a year, you will learn so many technical skills in the process of focusing that you will be able to then take those and apply them to other genres anyway. It's as much of a context in which to learn the skills as anything else. So lesson number one is focus is key to progress. On to lesson number two, let's have another analogy. Why not? Imagine you want to learn martial art. You go into the dojo as a white belt, and let's say it's karate. You then tell your sensei and all the other students, you don't want to learn how to stand properly. You don't want to learn how to punch and how to kick or spar using karate techniques. Instead, because you're so special and such a snowflake, you want to invent your own martial art. It's going to be the best martial art that anyone's ever seen. And you'll be like some kind of badass combination of Bruce Lee and Muhammad Ali and Georges St. Pierre, except better. Okay. Really? I don't think anyone could imagine that situation. Everyone would naturally think it would be ridiculous, right? And yet they somehow want to do that with music production. So how does that situation actually play out in reality? Well, you go in as a white belt and you learn the techniques that have been honed by many generations of experts over many years. You learn the basic punches, you learn the basic kicks, how to balance your stance, how to control your breathing. Everything gets broken down so you can learn the basics first and then you build up your skill. And you do this by learning from people who are more skilled than you. And if you keep doing this, you actually become skilled and competent yourself. And at that point, you can start to learn which rules can be bent and which can be broken. In music, it's exactly the same. If you choose a genre, that's your dojo. And the other tracks that are already released in that genre that sound professional are your senseis. You learn what kind of drum sounds to use. You learn what order they should be programmed in and what tempo to use. You learn how to put chords together, write bass lines, and learn what reverb and EQ is and how to use them effectively. Then when you understand all of these rules, you can start 
start to get more creative because you understand the game that you're playing. And when you try and create a genre that already exists, you're already learning from experts and standing on the shoulders of giants. And the other music is a benchmark against which you can measure your music's quality. So not only are you learning from this other music, you can also gauge your progress. And I found this to be huge when getting fast progress in music production and staying motivated, which I'm sure you'll agree is very important. And it's an ego thing, really. And I get it. If you're just going to sound like someone else, what's the point? Well, the point is, that's how you learn how to create something that actually sounds good. Avicii said when he started, he was just trying to create house music like his favourite artists. And through that process, he stumbled on his sound and became one of the most well-loved and successful EDM artists of all time. And Calvin Harris has said pretty much the same too. And from a personal perspective, when I finally decided to stop listening to my ego and really start using reference tracks to pick them apart, recreate and understand certain techniques and sounds, my skills as a producer increased at an exponential rate. So in my opinion, it's better to sound good than original because only then can you sound good and original. And be warned, every time I've given this advice to someone and they haven't listened to it every single time, they've come back after a year or two and they said, I wish I had just listened to you earlier. So consider that fair warning. The longer you resist referencing other music, the longer it will be until your music sounds good. Couple that with feedback from decent music senseis and you're onto the fast track. Okay, lesson number three, and I'm gonna start this with a story I heard a few years ago. It's short, but I always remember it because it had such a profound impact on me. You ready? Here we go. There were two brothers who were interviewed for a TV program. One of the brothers was a resounding success in any way that you might measure success. He had a loving family, he was healthy and happy, he enjoyed his work, he was probably a music producer, and he helped his community and earned enough money. The other brother, sadly, was a struggling alcoholic. He couldn't hold down a job, didn't have a girlfriend, and was living on his own, feeling pretty bitter and resentful at life. And when the interviewer asked that second brother how he'd ended up in that situation, he answered, I had no choice, my daddy was an alcoholic. The interviewer then asked the first brother how he'd managed to make a success of himself, and he answered, I had no choice, my daddy was an alcoholic. My point is, the inevitable and unavoidable trials of life can act as a burden or a fuel. As to which of those they are, it's entirely up to you. And after speaking with literally thousands of producers of all ages and from all parts of the world, I'm convinced that without fail, the number one battle producers face is our inner conversation with ourselves. I've seen supremely competent producers with millions of streams have deep imposter syndrome. I've also seen people devastatingly lose their parents, but have it drive them forward to success that has left me both staggered and surprised by their strength and courage. I've seen 18 year olds and 68 year olds talk themselves out of producing simply because they lack self-confidence. I've seen people react very defensively to constructive feedback and I've seen other people soak it up like a sponge and implement it. Now this inner game is a battle that rages in every single one of us and I don't think it ever stops but the number one characteristics I've seen in my most successful students is the desire to self-reflect, take responsibility and improve. And it's a choice, but if it's not natural to you, it does take training like anything else. That could be reading self-improvement books. That could be joining supportive communities and surrounding yourself with positive people. But I consider it like going to the gym. You can't just exercise and get fit and then that's it. It's a constant process and it takes constant maintenance. But as I said, my most successful students, when they are struggling mentally, they take steps to getting over whatever problem is holding them back. So to summarize, the three biggest lessons I've learned from teaching literally over 10,000 producers is one, focus is key. When you know exactly what you want to achieve and the genre you want to focus on, you will get there faster. Number two, reference music that you love and try to sound super good, not super original. Your unique original sound will develop and shine through over time anyway. There's no way to stop that happening if you keep producing. And number three is keep your mental state well maintained. As I said, reading self-help books, surrounding yourself with positive, supportive people and developing good habits will all help. And if you do ever struggle mentally with depression or anything like that, I've put together the 10 steps that have helped me personally in my life into this video here and maybe they might help you too. Anyway guys, I hope you found this useful. Do let me know in the comments if any of these points has struck a chord with you because I'm still learning all the time both from producing and from coaching and from reading the comments in YouTube because you guys are students too. We all are. So until next time, thanks for listening to me ramble. Cheers and happy producing.